Hey dolls and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, I'll be comparing this Revlon Styler versus the Dyson Smoothing Brush. And the reason why I wanted to compare them is for people who really love their Revlon Styler and thinking, should I buy the Dyson? And the price difference is so huge. This um, is around $50 and this is $750 Canadian dollars. I'm not too sure but I'll put the price here. So there's a huge difference but with this, you get six attachments and with the Revlon, you only have this attachment. But I have been delaying on buying the Dyson Airwrap because I was actually very happy with using this Revlon Styler. So let's start comparing these two tools. I'm also going to use this blowout solution from Ion. I just got this from Salis Beauty Supply. This smells so, so good. Don't forget to put this near your boots as well. So on my right side, I'm going to use the Dyson smoothing brush and on my left side, I'm going to use the Revlon Styler. Divide my hair into two and then split it into two again. Immediately, you'll see a lot of difference with these two styling tools. This one, it doesn't only have this nylon teeth. It also has a boar bristle in between. And there's a lot of hair in here because that boar bristle can really trap hair. With the Dyson smoothing brush, I've used this before. And as you can see, it's very clean because it doesn't really trap hair because it only has this teeth and it moves so the hair can just smoothly glide onto the teeth. Also since the teeth are moving, the airflow is also moving. But with the Revlon, the air is just constantly blowing throughout the tool. But when it comes to styling, I haven't seen it side by side so it's good to see which one performs better. So let's start. So I'll put it in the middle setting. So when I feel that my hair is almost dry, I actually put it in a low setting. I let it stay there for about 5 to 10 seconds just so it can hold its form like this. Like see that curve? It's because I let it stay there like that for a bit. But with this low setting, the air that comes out is still a little warm. But with the Dyson Airwrap, when you push this cool setting, either this or if you put it under cool, it actually would blow cool air and it's not warm at all. So that's also the big difference between the two. So let's now go with the Dyson side. As I've mentioned before, with this, you have an option for a cool, low, and high heat. You also have an option for a cool blast near the power button. And also you have three settings for the fan. So it could be low, medium, high. But with the Revlon, you only have this option. It has low, middle, and high. And the higher you go, the more air it blows. But when it comes to its temperature, I find that the longer you use it, the higher the heat. So if you use it for longer, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So it doesn't really have the low setting for heat or medium or high. So I'm going to test this out on my right side. I'm going to put it on the highest fan, highest heat. Because the 
way it is shaped compared to the Revlon. The Revlon, you can really twist the hair and keep it there. With this, since it's not like the attachment, the round brush attachment, and the reason why I didn't compare the round brush attachment to this, the round brush attachment actually has a little similarity to this as well, is that the shape of the round brush is very round. Well, well this one is more of an oval shape, so it kind of mimics this. But as you can tell, the Revlon Styler side has more of an inward shape at the end than the Dyson side because with the Dyson side, you can't really keep it, or maybe I can, but it's hard to keep the ends curved like this. But we'll try it. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, it just doesn't want to curve more than that. That's as far as it can go. But when it comes to drying time, I find that the Revlon side dries really fast. But see how this side looks longer than the Revlon side? It's because it's not as curved as the Revlon side. So let's do the second level of my hair. This time, I'll use the Dyson first. It's really fast drying and I like that I can still hold my hair after because with the Revlon, it really makes my hair hot and I really can't hold my hair while the Revlon styler is blowing hot air because it gets really hot. So for sure, you know that with the Dyson Airwrap, your hair would have less damage. But when it comes to styling, let's see if the Revlon styler has a chance still. So I'll use this on the second row of my hair. I forgot that when I'm using this also, my hair smells like burnt hair. I immediately smelled it when I had the air for longer on high heat and not on low heat. Oh gosh. So for sure, there will be damage on this side. <laughs> like I can really smell burnt hair. I also noticed that with the Revlon side, there's more frizzes than on the Dyson side. I think it's because of the brush since it swivels and moves like it really grips the hair well so every end is smoothing meanwhile with the Revlon the hair can still escape even though you can really feel the tension with this but I guess since the brush doesn't move it just smooths whatever it grips and plus points for Dyson for having more of that smoother look than the Revlon side so let's go to the top part. On to the Revlon side. Okay, so we're done. This is the Revlon side.
and the Dyson side. Okay, so when it comes to how my hair looks, the only big difference that I can see is that the Revlon side, my hair looks shorter because it has more of that curve at the end. And with the Revlon side, it's not as curved and inwards. And that's why this looks shorter and this one looks longer. This side though looks more smoother than the Revlon side. When it comes to feel, they both feel smooth. So I like that. But I can definitely tell that in the long run, if I always use my Revlon styler, actually I got the dupe for it. So it's not really the original Revlon, so the original might be different. But even though I think that with the Revlon Styler dupe or the Revlon Styler, since it doesn't have any option for heat or doesn't have any option for fan, I think that the Revlon Styler or the dupe for it can cause more damage. And it's because you can't control the heat on this tool. If you want to blow more air on your hair, which is for me works better then the temperature will also go high to the point that I can touch my hair while this is blowing hair but with this tool I was still very comfortable using my hands while styling my hair and even when it's blowing hair I can still put my hand on my hair because it wouldn't burn my hand and I love that I can control the fan and the heat separately so if I want more air, I can do that with less heat or vice versa. If I want less air and more heat, I can do that. And I like that in the long run, I feel like my hair would be healthier using this tool than with this. But if you're someone who doesn't really blow dry their hair too often and there's only one style that you like because with this, you purchase the Dyson Air Wrap, it comes with a blow dryer, smoothing attachment, the air wrap attachment that can curl your hair. So if you're someone that loves to style their hair, I think that the Dyson Air Wrap is worth the buy. I was also very skeptical about this, but now I find myself always reaching to, out to it because it's just a really good tool with the Revlon since I can only do one style with this and really I know that my hair is getting damaged every time I use this because of the heat so I think that I will definitely prefer using the Dyson Air Wrap over the Revlon Styler or the Revlon Styler dupe although I've used this so many times before and I even use this on my clients to dry their damp hair I like this tool but I know that if I keep using it, my hair will be damaged. It's a very affordable tool too. So if you're traveling and you want to style and blow dry your hair, this would be perfect to bring along. But if you have the cash and if you like styling your hair, the Dyson Air Wrap would really be worth it. Also, when it comes to using it like with my hands, both of them are very comfortable. I like that this Revlon one or the Revlon do pass this curve so it's very easy on the hand like it can really you can really grip this perfectly and it, it's not as heavy I think the Dyson is heavier than the Revlon do so when it comes to ease of use and being able to maneuver it on your hands both of them are good although I appreciate that the Revlon or the Revlon do pass the settings at the bottom so I don't accidentally change the setting because sometimes I can switch the settings here even if I don't want to because it's where my hand is. Oh for sure you can put your hands at the bottom but it's easier to put it here so hopefully next time they would put the adjustments maybe here but I think that they put all this buttons here because you can easily access this cool blast so when you're styling your hair you can easily flick that and have that cool gloss on your hair to set your hair. So that's it. That's my comparison between these two tools. Thank you so much Joss for watching. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll always be updated once a new video is out. Thank you so so much Joss again for watching. I'll see you on my next one.